And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. How about a Japanese hero? It's truly a Pacific partnership. The iLoud Micro Monitor Sweepstakes, that launches today. We've got a Gru 3 ITL. Oh, how you is in the house. Woo! Ready, <laughs> wow. aim, fire. That You're at the good. place. It's Pensado's place. Yay. Wow, that, that scared me. What scared you? <laughs> the Ohio University. I got you. Do that again on three, on four. One, two, three. Woo! First one. Hey. That was pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Take it. Oh, that was all your contributions. <laughs> Thank you very much. I see you're, you're with no, us. No, I'm excited about our guest because, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, Music is worldwide now, and, mm -hmm. and I think exposing and shining a spotlight on different parts of the world is a good, good thing. Stuff. We got one of the best today. Let's go with it. You ready? Yeah. Hey, gang, time for another week of audio therapy. So appreciate your support, likes, and subscribes. Big ups to the best partners in the world. They would be the Blackbird Academy, Westlake Pro, Avid, Recording Connection, Lander, DTS, and Studio 202 DC. Now, let us tell you about an awesome pair of speakers, as we refer to this iLoud micro monitor <laughs> thing. Um, and we're going to show you how you can win them. They are called the iLoud micro monitors, and uh, these babies absolutely bang. Um, Ooh, scared me. Uh, they're, they're the monitor with the high end sound without the high, high end price. So yeah. just, just react to how when you first play them or well, listen to them. Uh, is FCC still on our back? No, we're good. They scared the shit out of me. They were like, <laughs> I'm thinking like, you know, I'm thinking like, look at them. Right, right, right. And so you, you get in your head what they should sound like. Right. But the thing that really impressed me was um, they provide a unique set of information that we engineers need. They can emulate, kind of help you make your mix tight on laptops, mm -hmm. on earbuds, mm -hmm. on TVs, mm -hmm. things like that, so. Um, and really good for, for yeah. the home studio guy. Like, you've actually, you and some of your compatriots yeah, have yeah. mixed. Yeah, Bob's issues. used them. I mean, a, lot, a lot of my friends are using them. Um, but for, it couldn't be better for home studio and so forth. Yeah. I, I got a pair and I don't mix. I just try yeah. to show off stuff that I get for free. <laughs> and some people were over and I hid these and yeah. turned them on with my phone. Yeah. And this one woman ran through the house trying to figure but out. But you bring up a good point. A, a person that just enjoys music from their computer, uh, they're self-powered, one chord, you're rocking, right? Bluetooth, crazy, crazy. Um, and guess what? You get to win a pair. These are made by IK Multimedia, and they and us want you to have a chance to experience these guys. Yeah. For the next six weeks, you can win weekly. T-Rex Max, iLoud Micro Monitors, T-Rex Vintage Compressor Bundles, Lurson Mastering Console, all kinds of different things are going to happen over the next six weeks. We'll have graphics to show you that. The weekly winners, there's three each week. Wow. So then you get a chance, and that will also make you eligible for the grand prize. And the grand prize winner will win a whole bunch of stuff. Total Studio Max, the Mastering Console from Lurson, Arc 2, the iLoud Micro Monitors, and on and on and on. All you have to do is go to this URL. See it below me right there? Enter and then win. We will announce each and every week for the next six weeks. Now, also, if you want to take an opportunity to hear these boys yourself, they are actually going on tour. I mean, these things are so hot they haven't opened an act. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually see the dates. Um, they're going to be all over the country. Um, and you want to go and hear these things. I, I don't think we're over overstating it. We both had oh, no, no. independent, not, yeah. uh, like crazy yeah. reactions to it. Um, so, uh, go there for the dates. You won't be disappointed. Once again, enter weekly, win weekly. You'll be eligible for the grand prize when you enter. See them on tour at the following locations you see right here. Do not delay. Enter, enter, enter. These things will go fast. Uh, big thanks to Dave and Derek and Star and Enrique and all the gang at IK Multimedia. It's going to be a good thing. And always to our main man, Gavin Lurson for introducing us. This company has great, great other stuff as well, too, and you're going to be the beneficiary. The iLive Micro Monitor Sweepstakes, it's on, baby. All right. <laughs> now, to our Blackbird friends, you know, you hear oh, us wow. talk about them each week. 
Let me just give you a quick example. The last mm -hmm. 72 hours, we, Dave and I got a request from a very famous producer yeah. looking for an assistant. I won't mention his name. I uh, told him I was, had a, got, a job, but he right. didn't believe me. Yeah, he, you, were, <laughs> you were too expensive. Um, we reached out. Uh, Blackbird interviewed five or six people. Their placement service went into action. They sent mm -hmm. a resume. We got it to that famous producer. Um, I got a call this morning. They've already connected. They are. This guy's going to get interviewed. Literally in 72 hours, somebody went from wanting a job to probably having their life changed. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between a really good placement service and a really good reactive school. Mm -hmm. So um, it can be life changing. When you're making education decisions, please consider them. Go to karma at the blackbirdacademy.com. Um, you'll get all your info there. Veterans, good for you. International students, welcome as well. Live and studio classes open for the booking. It is an amazing place, and it was great to watch that in action. I mean, because you know how demanding the guy who called us is. Yeah. He's a nice guy, but he does high-level yeah. stuff. You know, he supplied us with two of our favorite guests, too. Yeah, he's, this, this is a beast. So anyway, it's, it's an example of it working, and you want to take advantage of that. Yeah. All right, so... Let's meet our guy. He's the rock hanging, heavy lifting, hand roll destroying, our happy Hungarian. His mama named him. Chaco. <laughs> Every week. Every week, man. Never gets old. old. That's right. So now, you as a guy who has heard them in Dave's room and at my place, what did you think about? These, these babies. I was completely blown away. I was a little skeptical at first just because of the size, mm -hmm. but Same here. I listened to them and there was so much depth and just details that you wouldn't get out of a small woofer like that. It was, I was blown away. Did he just say woofer? I, I was gonna comment woofer. on that. I've not heard woofer. Yeah. <laughs> See, Hungarians speak phonetically. Yeah. <laughs> so it's W O, that's woo. F E R, yeah. fur. So it's a well, woofer. Well, if it were bigger than four inches, it'd be a woofer, but anything under four is a woofer. <laughs> So how do you say H-O-O-K-A-H? Hookah. Hookah. Okay, not hookah. Hookah. Woofer. It depends what part down. Hookah. You got that? I don't think what I would say. I might be on your side, Tungor. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Dave. Okay. Um, well, good. I think that uh, clearly we're all pretty impressed. Yeah. What you say? When you start, uh, when you start the way I put on some music and some of my own stuff and... Yeah. Pff, yeah, it really works. Um, all right, well, let's let's get these guys to enter and enjoy mm. it. Your mix is only as good as the speakers that are giving you the information. That's that's right, and my mix is my mixes suck, so <laughs> it's just not even a uh, thing. I'm going to show you a little trick I do to create bass lines for my tunes. So here's some things I talk about. Adding attack and punch to your sound, softening and rounding out a sound, creating movement and groove with audio samples, and that's about it. These things can be applied to just about any sound you're working with also. So let's take a look at this. I'll zoom in over here and focus on this little bass section over here. Basically, what this hit is, is actually a piece from the same one here. I copied this little piece, pasted it here. So now I have a double hit with the same note. But I want this small hit to ride up smoothly to the longer one, to bring dynamics and movement to the hit, rather than it being the same one repeated. So I'll double click this, and here's what I'll do. I want to get rid of this little pop in the beginning of the hit and round it out a little bit. So I can move this start marker to a new position to avoid the pop. And notice, I'm getting a pop, and the pop starts to go away, and then it comes back. This is because of this transient shape, because basically the further away from this line the waveform is starting, the louder the pop will be. And once I go right on that line where the waveform crosses, it will be a very clean hit. And with Live 9.5, you can really go in there because they updated how detailed the waveforms are. So now I have this really soft hit. And I'll connect these. 
Now I have a softer hit here and a harder hit here. And one more thing. I'm going to turn the volume down over here and bring it down a little bit so it rides up in volume. So now I have this. I uh, hope you enjoyed that ITL. Um, and now to our guest. Uh, a little bit ago, we had a chance to interview a guy who's had enormous success in Japan, but he's also created this very interesting relationship with Los Angeles and America and writers and producers here and how to take all that information and make really big and major commercial successful music mm -hmm. in Japan, mm -hmm. but also how to crack mm -hmm. the American market. Um, his name is Heroism. Enjoy our conversation with him. Man, today I was leaving the uh, Fab Factory, and of course everybody goes, hey, who's your guest, who's your guest, who's that hero is, and everybody's, oh man, he's amazing, he's mm -hmm. done so many of this, so many of that, and everybody knows your stats, oh, everybody knows wow. how many records you did. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, can, can I share that? Yeah. So on Saturday I did a panel for a company called Artist Max, it was me and Ross mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. CJ Vanston, and we were doing stuff on song structure and mm -hmm. so, so forth. And it's a lot of amateur folks who want some, right. this lady comes up to me afterwards who was part of the panel, she said, you know Hero. And I said, well, I'm having heroism. I know, even from the show, we love his work. And like, really? no, yeah, like yeah. you're, you're wow. famous, so oh, we're, we're wow. honored to be with you. Um, so yeah, the, the, the K-pop and J-pop thing, it's fascinating. Yeah, you know, we, you and I were talking earlier and we were talking about how that method of taking a, 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 some young artists and molding them and isolating them from the rest of the world and, and, and putting them through a, a school on how to be an artist Kind of started with Barry Gordy at Motown, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that part of the process that you go through as a producer is developing the artist and making them better and working on their performance and stuff? Yeah, 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 we have. But yeah, so the K-pop has more strict structure, mm -hmm. I think. So K-pop is stricter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Now, from your perspective, because um, you know Erica Nuri. Oh. Yeah, of course. Yeah, she's she's my, like, <laughs> really? my, like my little daughter. Uh, oh. She's not so little anymore, but wow. yeah. we know her husband. Wow. Well, what's fascinating that I love about what your work is, you, you incorporate certain kinds of writers from America and other things into your craft, but yeah. you stay true to your craft. Yeah. Is that because you admire them as writers? What, what draws you to them? Yeah, so the here, the, so I can, I can see and I can, I can find what I couldn't find in Japan. Ah. So yeah, everyone, of course, everyone is very talented. Yeah. And that everyone makes sense. Has, yeah, so Did every day is very... It, yeah, always something new. Yeah, yeah, something new I can get, so. Do you like writing and producing here or there or both? Now, I can say I prefer writing here. Do you? Yeah, yeah. and uh, of course, so, a lot of Japanese artists is coming to LA yes. because people love LA. Yes. And uh, all the top of the world producer is coming here. That's true. Yeah, actually the, the last, uh, yesterday I wrote with Australian producer, yeah. of course, who is coming here. Yeah. So he is the best place for writing. Like a Japanese artist is, a lot of Japanese artists is coming here. Yep. So. Um, we, found, we found the same thing when we talked to our Indian partners that more people want to come here and work. But funny enough, I talked to a very big management company based in mm -hmm. LA, and they now find no reason to go to even to New York because oh. more people are coming to LA. Like LA has become this creative center. Yeah. So you get more done here. Yep. Is that right? Do you have your own studio here or do you work yes. in different places? Yeah, I have a, my own studio. The West, West Lake Pro guy did a great job. So, West Lake Pro. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy about <laughs> yeah. the studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they do great work. Yeah. Hero, one of, the things that, one of the things that I noticed about other countries, particularly Sweden and Japan and some of the Scandinavian countries, but especially Japan and, and Korea, you guys aren't afraid of melodies. Americans somehow have gotten afraid of a good melody. Uh, and, and, and that's that's kind of the foundation of your writing. You, you always yep. start with a, 
a melody that just gets in my head. Yeah. Uh, how did you get it, get so, how did you get into melody at such a young age? So, yeah, actually, I started writing because uh, there was no idea of melody. Mm -hmm. So, the only way is make something new uh -huh. by myself. Yeah. So, that's why mm -hmm. I still love the melody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you said, mm -hmm. it's not about melody right now here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, more about but, track. But, but it, when I listen to your work, it, it feels like you've got a lot of the old Motown greats their their melody in your in, in oh. your songs. Ah. Um, that's a and, compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 how how do you come up with a melody? Do you do you, do you, do you get a, a lay down a chord structure and then and, and a bit of a groove and then kind of think the melody in your head and then it comes out the speakers or how do you go about yes, finding a melody? So do you have one in your head all the time? I play the piano mm -hmm. and also the guitar, but piano is. So you compose yeah, on piano mostly. With, yeah, chord progression mm -hmm. and with singing. Ah. Yeah. Now, when you do that, are you mostly doing this by yourself or in collaboration with other people? When do you bring uh, in other people? Yes, to co co collaboration. Early? Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I find that a lot of our guests are more inspired by collaboration. Yeah. It pushes you creatively. Yeah. Right? It takes you places where you wouldn't take yourself. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Got it. Um, now, here's the most important question of the thing. Can Dave <laughs> and I come to the studio and watch you work one day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, we can? Yeah, can yeah, 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 please. Okay. Is that cool management? I'm not sure management's with it. <laughs> yeah, Marnie's here. Good? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just wanted to see. What, what's that band? Uh, there's a band of um, uh, KB48 or something like that. Like there's uh, so many of those guys, they AKB? got their own zip code, huh? AKB? AKB48. AKB 48. There's like 48 of them. Yeah, That's yeah. a big group. Actually, more than forty-eight. Is it right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they're oh, good too. Though wow. they're, they're not. They're not like models. They're more like girl next door. But yeah, they're, they're, in the classroom. Like. Mm. That's a lot of microphones. <laughs> That's a lot. Can you imagine Barry yeah. Gordy teaching those girls how to That's dance? A lot of background of choreography. <laughs> well, isn't that cool? But well, the thing that I like they about they make like five cents a piece a show. Well, the the culture. What I like about the culture and what Heroes was so good at is that they are openly commercial. Like they want a great melody, melody yeah. and a great hook mm -hmm. and a hit song. Yeah. And you know, I'm I'm supposed to do a podcast tomorrow and it's some American young guys, and they want to talk about um, uh, the devaluation of artistry. Mm -hmm. and, how, and, I, and my point to them is that there's this kind of cool thing in America yeah. that I think is weird, which is commercial's not good. I think commercial's oh. good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What, what, it, I mean, you can do both, but mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't diss one and, mm -hmm. and then support the other. Mm -hmm. Is part of your dream to, or goal, to work on American artists and produce them as well? Yeah, so after moving here, I'm working with more uh, like European oh, voice band from The Voice. Great. And uh, yeah, also I'm de developing American young artists right okay. now. So okay. writing and trying to do something new. Yes. Yeah. So do you like the business of it? Do you want to develop these artists and put them on your own label or put them on other labels or do you know? Yeah, I'm. so I'm doing kind of both. And also the pitching, of course, yeah. trying to pitching to big artists, yeah. of course, every day. Yeah. And uh, on the other on the other hand, yeah, I'm more like uh, working with artists. Got it. And trying to. Got it. Yeah. Got something it. New, make something well, new. We worked on uh, both worked on After Romeo. I did some stuff oh. with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Johnny and those guys. Um, wh when you're working on an American. Um, song for release here, what would you say the biggest difference in the process is between working on a song for here and working on a song for Japan? So the biggest thing here is, I think, li lyric. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I'm not a native English speaker, mm -hmm. but you do I can. You do pretty good. You <laughs> Thank you. Really well. but Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> I can be the kind of, kind of not judge, but I can be the judge. I can say, uh, oh, maybe it's not croaky enough, right. or right. so not like not as lyricist, but right. as like a customer. Or, yeah, yeah. Like, so like a like a listener, like a yeah. consumer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So do you, when you write, do you write in Japanese and then translate it to English? Because you have to figure out what rhymes and That's things, right? Question. So, but write in English. Okay. And yeah. Because it, it'll make more later, sense. Mm -hmm. Later, yeah. if we need Japanese lyric, then we translate. will translate. Ah, but so some the of the cool word we will use right. as, as it is. Oh, and you leave yeah. it as it is. Yeah. Ah, Your process, or, uh, what, what DAW are you using? Uh, are you using uh, logic. Of, are you logic, logic. logic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and, latest one. Uh, do you prefer virtual sense to real sense, or how? So my favorite one right now is Prophet Six. Oh, uh, wow. yeah. The reissue. Huh? There's a new one that came out. Yeah. I forget, I forget who Which made one? it. Which one? I can't remember the name of it. But the guy across the hall from me at Fab Factory, he's got everything known to me. Oh. I love the Prophet Six. Yeah. And uh, are you? What virtual sense are you using? Virtual sense, I. I kind of serum, have every, contact. yeah, serum and contact mm -hmm. and uh, what else, like uh, silence? Silent, mm -hmm. FMA. And, and, yeah. And, uh, what, what do you monitor or what do you listen to for speakers? Uh, I'm using the, the Yamaha HS8, the HS, biggest yeah. one. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. got it. Did you ever see yourself as a performer or just as a uh, producer? I used to, I used to be the member for pop rock band. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and did you play p keyboard in I that? I was playing keyboard. Okay. But did, did you dance? Uh, kind of. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Got it. But, you know, so when playing keyboard, we cannot do... Can't do much. Yeah, yeah right? right there. So yeah. that's why I quit. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Playing on stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of boring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just sitting here like Yeah, that. yeah. yeah have, to be, have to be on, on stage. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what, what effects have, um, have the internet had on... Herb calls it the flattening of, of the world with the internet. What, what, what effect has the internet have had on on uh, the culture that, that spawns the music that you like from Japan and that you do. Uh, people can hear a lot of the stuff in America instantly now, and you don't have to wait, you don't have to buy CDs anymore. Yeah. Um, how, how has it changed, the internet has changed? Do you write differently for the audience now than you did 10 years ago? Ah, oh, that's, that's a really good question. And, uh, About time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I mean, so yeah, it, as a listener, mm -hmm. we are also listener for music. Yes. So as a listener, it changed a lot, but as creator, yeah, same it should thing. be yeah, it should be same. same. And uh, the good melody is good melody, and uh, yeah, and that that works yeah. all over the world. Yeah. yeah. So is the the Japanese consumer. What is their take on American music? Do they listen to a lot of American music or no? Or is it, is, what American artists are favorites in Japan? Ah, uh, like, yeah, Justin Bieber. Yeah. And uh, so the thing is, young, younger people won't listen to uh, US music. They do. Lot. Younger people listen to uh, US music. Uh, no, uh, sorry, they don't. Oh, they don't. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So they listen mostly Japanese artists. Yeah, mostly Japanese artists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. But finally, we have yeah. Spotify. Yeah, exactly. The, exactly. Last year? Yeah, just last year. So Spotify just started last year. Yeah. Again. Oh wow. Yeah. So there's a whole world opening up of being able to listen to music so from everywhere. So now, so they can listen. The uh, uh, the Billboard top ten for this week for Japan, Japan's top ten, Bieber was like number 12 or 13, I think uh, Shawn Mendes was the only one in the top 10. Mm -hmm. And then, you, then then there's very few until you get down to 50. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and the 50 and below, there's a lot, a lot of American artists, but. Yeah, uh, there's no that's Drake right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> in Japanese chart. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So unique. But, but, you know, Ed Sheeran, Mendes, Bieber, mm -hmm. Melodies, you know, there you go. So the. Yeah, the, right, right. Uh, are there different kinds of genres of music in Japan? like? Pop or hip hop is is hip hop something in Japan that that, that yeah, Japanese artists listen to? Yeah, but or is there a Japanese when version? It of hip -hop? To, yeah, yeah, right. Ah, it's more J. I want to hear that. J hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. And is that true of like country and other kinds of things? So there's a Japanese version of these genres that work for the Japanese listener. Yeah, is that I, correct? Yeah, I think so. The country music here is kind of Japanese, Japanese country music, ah. and uh, which people 
still like to like. listen Got listen it. to. So, yeah, Got that's it. uh, also it's kind of pop. Yes. With traditional, very melancholic melody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that. a J-pop. You what's, know what? Uh, you, you just reminded me of something I wanted to ask you. How often do you, you know, uh, all of Asia has really unique traditional instruments, you know, and, and uh. the, the, to Americans, they look kind of unusual. Do you ever incorporate those in your work? Like maybe a maybe a sample of something yeah. here and there? Yeah, oh, so you do. I, I'm doing. I'm doing that. Are lot. you doing that in, in America as well, or just for yeah, Japan? Yeah, for for European stuff and American stuff too. Like uh, so, the, these days the black sound is very popular, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have traditional koto. Yes. Koto sounds and the what, what, is what is that? Koto is. Is it the four string? Yeah, it's hard to explain. <laughs> but it's cool I have to sounding. do that, but it's, cool <laughs> it's just cool sound. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, you're just using samples of it now. Yeah, I'm nobody just uses using a real thing sound, anymore. So. <laughs> I, mean, I cannot play the koto. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You put one of those in your mixes. I think We're a koto is a four-stringed instrument yeah, with but, the big tuning pegs and a little square thing. Yeah, like I think like I played this. one and uh, made of uh, wood. Made of wood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Now see, I want to. I want to see him play that stuff. I think I played. Sweet Home Alabama on one. Huh. I swear, <laughs> I was trying to make that up. I, I forget where we were touring it, and uh, I was, I'm fascinated with Asia. I actually took Japanese because I, I wanted to go live in Asia for a while. How is the DJ culture in Japan big? Uh, so, in my opinion, so mm -hmm. DJ in Japan never make a hit song right here. Right. Ah, interesting. Not like that. And right. More like a But do play. crowds come to see them? Yeah. It's a live performance, yeah, there, live but performance. not a hit making. Thing. Yeah. Ah. But that's, yeah, so that's, it's also my opinion, but that will be Japanese future. So right. DJ could be more like hit producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like here. Yeah. Yeah. Be bigger guy. Hey, yeah. Hero, um, uh, I, I know some of my friends have been toying with the idea of maybe trying to write for. Korea and for Japan. Is yeah. there opportunities for Americans to go over there and, and, and write and collaborate with, with artists from Japan and producers like yourself? Yeah, yeah. Are, is, are they received or is it hard to get into the... So the, maybe the best, best way uh -huh. is Please come to my studio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, that's the easiest way. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, Teddy's doing that. Teddy's like huge in uh, Korea uh, now. Let's Teddy see, Riley. I think. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, is he? And yeah. we can, of he course, we can collaborate for both market, not only for U.S. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also Japanese market. And uh, once the session start, the people never care right. about which market. We should aim for right. They just want more about, good music. Yeah, let's make great songs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, and that's you know what, what I love. And what what you just said is true. No matter what country, whatever, just make great songs. Yeah, right? yeah. One of the things that I love in your philosophy is that in, when you developed your name, you wanted listeners to to, to your music would make them feel heroic. Oh, right? you could be oh. a hero, right? Yeah, that's uh, my name. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I come love from. it. I, oh, I thank think, you so much. Well, I, I think that um, I think creative people should inspire so that when you hear music, you feel good and you yeah. want to reach and you grow. You don't want to make music to feel bad. You want to make music to feel good. Correct? Yeah. Um, because between your music and your hat, <laughs> You're oh, gonna you. feel good because I gotta get a hat like oh, that. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm always looking for a new white hat. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so okay. It's, it's I got really a couple of hat hard. stores. I'll tell you about. Oh yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gorin Brothers is one. Oh, is it I'll one? It is yeah. it a white one? Uh, yeah. Where, where's your studio? What part of town? Pasadena. Oh, there's one out there. There's a really? out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Prince. Oh, yeah, Prince. <laughs> well, if Jack Joseph Puig's, Puig's anywhere near, there's a hat store. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to live close to one. Changor, you got a, a couple questions for our guests? We do. All right. This first one's from Jake Wynn. How does karaoke being big in Japan affect your songwriting? Ah, karaoke. Yeah. Hmm. It, it used to used to be very popular, uh -huh. but now... I don't know. It's, it's going away. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so here too. Yeah. Oh, really? I think 
I think it's something to do and get drunk on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, no, no. no. Here, here is Smule, S-M-U-L-E. It's, it's got millions of users. You get your iPhone and you do karaoke on your iPhone with other people. Right, and you're just drunk. My wife is from Asia, <laughs> and I know this very, very well. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I can tell. So if we make J-pop song, mm -hmm. we will consider if the melody is good enough for karaoke. Uh, I mean, easy singing, easy, oh, yeah. okay. is very important yes. as a hit. Yes. So, yeah, so karaoke is uh, still so part actually, of, yeah. Actually, that melody, once you have it, you'll know if it's good for karaoke yeah. or not. Yeah. Got it. Give us another chunker. The second one's from Sam Almada. If you could write a song for any artist, living or dead, who would it be? Well. <laughs> Let's see. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Get him, Herb. Well, no, I mean, one of the things that was interesting about Michael to me, because um, Michael came up about the same time I did, um, Michael was one of the first black artists who pulled the world together uh -huh. and who didn't, you didn't think about color. When, you know, if you look at an early Michael Jackson concert, any place in the world, it was all kinds of people who came together, mm -hmm. and not everybody had a chance to do that. So his impact is something that I think for people who like commercial music, uh -huh. Michael was so commercial, and yeah. so many hits, and um, so it just reminds me, what I love about the way you think about music and the way the culture of Japan is about music is that you're pure about hits and pop yeah. and melody. Oh, yeah, that's reminded me their artist. Who? So, the artist uh -huh. who will get Grammy. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's that the answer. Sorry, I forgot. Got you. That's, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, so now we come to that point in the show, which is called Batter's Box. Mm -hmm. um, you want this in English or Japanese? No, I think, yeah, Chris, I think your Japanese. forays into yeah. Japanese Japanese culture time, right? Have not been that successful. Chang, you want to come do it? I can't speak Japanese. I know you can. Uh, yeah. He has a Japanese girlfriend. Yeah, so. I heard that. So yeah. if, you, if you ever go back to Japan, or if, if your management ever goes back to Japan, and there's a sushi shortage, that's because <laughs> sushi he, shortage. he went to Tokyo. <laughs> I am I am almost bankrupt from feeding him sushi. It's it's <laughs> unbelievable. There's no salmon left in this part of the country. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. All right, so you're gonna ask him some questions and he'll give you one or two word answers. Okay, okay. So you'll our, do good. Sushi? No, we'll see. Yeah, well, we'll go. How about sushi or sashimi? <laughs> Which would no piano? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Piano. Yeah, the cr classic one. I like the Steinway, uh -huh. but I'm using uh, the Numa Numa Logic. Oh, okay. Of course, white. Okay. Numa logic white. White. Strings. Strings, LA scoring. Nice. Ooh, he's good. 808. 808 uh, punch box and 808, 808 wave pair. Nice. Reverb. Reverb. Uh, Bahara. Ooh. Guitar. Guitar. Uh, mm. uh, Gibson SG and Fender. Of Vocals. Uh, vocals? I, I love the Manly. Uh, yeah, Mari, what mic do you like to use when you're when you're producing vocals? Oh, so Molly reference. Right? Okay. Yeah. Got it. I don't know how to ask this question. I might have to not even answer. Uh, you know when you see a lot of the Japanese guys that got those big, huge drums and they're playing that? That's the question. What? <laughs> what are those called? I don't know what the drums are called. Taiko. Huh? Taiko. Yeah. Taiko, right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, see, we had a dual answer for that. Okay, you. give me give me a, give me an answer for that. He, he just did. Taiko oh, he did? Yeah, yeah, Taiko, right? You're tired. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. If uh, if your studio caught fire, what one piece of gear would you rescue? Wow. Oh, studio desk. Ah, studio oh. desk. It's a very special. special one. You can see the picture, but it's very customized. Yeah, for you. customized ah. or quite. Ah. But I, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> Chango will help yeah, you. Yeah, it's 500 pounds. Oh, Chango will help you. He oh, can, yeah. He, yeah. yeah. Just Brains get him some me. sushi and he'll, yeah. he'll help you. That's all I got. Uh, no, you did good. And he did he really did well. Real good. So here's a question, just because I'm curious. Yep. Does anybody watch this show in Japan? Does anybody watch Pensado's Place in Japan? Is it popular at all? Actually, I didn't know that, but it's very famous. Oh, is it? It's very famous. Oh, so wow. before we're shooting today, yeah, yeah, I I told some friend, like a producer friend. Yeah. Everybody knows about Pensado's wow. Brace. Wow. Yeah. So, thank you for inviting. Oh no, thank. 
Thank you for thank you for just. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known, <laughs> oh, that's if I had known, I'd dressed in white. I mean, we should have done a whole white thing. Yeah. You know what? We might have to just alter social media and put Dave and I in white with him. So we, we do the picture. Yeah, let's do that. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's, uh, the, going back to the popular in Japan, it just sometimes you just can't it's fathom mind that. Mind. It's, it's like the mind. internet is a wonderful thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to introduce chicken wings in Japan. Chicken Watch wings? It. Yeah, they're delicious. We'll, we'll tell you about that later. Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. You are so gifted and so talented, which is why you've had so much success. But Thank I think you. it's because... You really believe in the song. Yeah. You believe in melody. You believe yeah. in the hook. You believe in the stuff that it structurally makes the song. Our audience will be always fascinated by other cultures and music. So, would you come back so we could do a part two with you at some point in time in the near future? Yeah, you did come back and visit us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the other thing we might do is maybe we do an ITL. So that you and Dave show us some technical stuff that yeah. you do. Want to do that? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, let's do that. Please, please. Let's do that as an ITL. Yeah. Um, we are so honored to have you. Oh, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Thank Such you. A pleasure. Thank you so much. I, you know what? I, and stupidly, I was going to bow. I was just, I'm just trying to be culturally correct. <laughs> and I, I didn't I didn't know what to, I look like Obama in Japan. I just, I didn't, I didn't know quite what to do. Uh, we are honored to have you. Oh, you honored, honored to be here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Dave, take us home. I think I think I think let's think this way. Uh, the world's a bigger place than it was 20 years ago. Um, 20 years ago, a lot of my records would do 10 million here, but they'd only do 2 million worldwide. Now it's the opposite. Now you do 20 million worldwide and 5 million here. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? It means that uh, we need to be more aware of how the rest of the world gives us the respect to to try and emulate what we do. And we need to do a little bit in reverse, maybe emulate some of the cool stuff that's going on in West Africa, some of the cool stuff that's going on in Sweden, other parts of the world, and, and broaden our, 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 uh, our musical knowledge. Including some cool stuff in Japan. Say goodbye. Next week. See you guys. <laughs>